Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Seven Must-Try Marketing Strategies for 2017. My name is Michelle. I'm just here to get us started before passing things over to the one and only Larry Kim. Um, a couple of logistics for today's presentation. Um, once we conclude, you will all receive an email that has the recording of everything we cover, uh, as well as the slide deck. Um, you can feel free to share that with your colleagues um, so let them know what you learned today. Um, last but not least, uh, we will be saving some time for questions and answers for Larry. Um, so make sure that if anything comes up throughout the presentation, you submit those in the question box. And um, we'll be sure to save some time to get to those. All right, and without further ado, I pass it over to Larry. Hey, thanks, Michelle. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Looks like we have a huge audience online, so thank you, uh, WordStream fans, for jumping on the call today. Uh, got a great presentation for you, uh, you know, prepared here. Uh, uh, first of all, Happy New Year. Uh, it's uh, great to have you back here, and, um, you know, it's a new year, and, you know, you got to think of all those stupid resolutions like, you know, you know, losing weight and all this stuff. Well, uh, it, it, in, in marketing, it's it's all about the channels, you know what I mean? It's all about uh, all the, the tactics that worked and worked for us last year. Those were great, but what got us here won't get us there kind of thing. Uh, and so I wanted to uh, kind of mix things up this, this, uh, this month with a uh, a couple of uh, interesting new ideas. Maybe uh, there's a couple of new ideas here for, for you to try this year. Hopefully, um, uh, they can can inspire you to, to to mix things up a little bit. Um, you know, you know, you know how it is. Every year, the boss man says, uh, you know, we need more leads and sales. We need to get those conversion rates, and we got to get those costs down. It's like, it's it's, it's just like those resolutions. It's, it's always the same things every year. You know, like the quit smoking and stuff like that. You know, so so cool. Wouldn't it be cool if we could actually do that this year um, in a way that was like where, where we weren't chipping away at the stuff at like, you know, 1% gains here, you know, tiny little itty bitty insignificant changes. Like, is there a way that we can um, kind, of, kind of actually make a big difference here? And so that's what, kind of what was my screen in terms of the selection criteria for the ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I wanted to look for things uh, that had kind of relatively small effort to, to implement, but had a rel relatively large uh, leverage in terms of the bang for your buck. All right, so uh, let's get into the new uh, marketing tactics and hacks. And by the way, guys, I, I worked you know all week on this deck. Uh, one of the neat things about this deck is there are more unicorns, 300% more unicorns uh, in this deck than any previous uh, 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 presentation that I've ever done. So that's that's because I'm all about value, and I want to make sure you get your, your money's worth here uh, in terms of uh, most most unicorns for your time spent. All right, so the thing about these unicorns, you know, when you when you if you try these out, it's going to be great. I'm telling you, I've I've tested them out personally on dozens and dozens of accounts. So so this is all unicorn approved marketing tactics, uh, and, and it's going to be great. Uh, before getting into all the details about uh, the the tactics and tricks and, and strategies to use this year, I wanted to introduce myself in the off chance. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're new to WordStream and, and, and me. Uh, my name's Larry. I'm the founder of WordStream. I'm also the founder of the International Unicorn Association of, of the World. Uh, I'm originally from Canada, uh, from a province called Manitoba, uh, which is the polar bear capital of the world. Um, moved to Boston after college about 10 years ago uh, because the weather was so much better. Um, ha, 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 that's a joke. I know you can't laugh here because it's a webinar, but it's, it's uh, just trying to be a little jokey here. Um, I live in Harvard Square. Uh, that's a kind of a famous neighborhood uh, just a mile or so away from downtown Boston. And uh, it's a famous area because that's, of course, where Harvard University is, but it's also where uh, Microsoft was founded. It's where Facebook was founded. Uh, and it's also where WordStream was founded eight years ago, uh, originally kind of in a Panera Bread uh, you know, working out of the the, the, the cafeteria there. It's a bakery, basically, uh, that had free Diet Coke refills and and, and free Wi-Fi. Uh, we, we've we've kind of uh, upgraded our our uh, our our company substantially uh, since 2008. The company employs over 200 people today. We just moved into these baller million dollar offices in, in Back Bay, like in the Prudential Mall here in, in Boston. It's like a very, very um, cool area. Uh, but but uh, basically the company manages about a billion dollars of ad spend for over 10,000 customers uh, in the world. 
Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, oh, one other thing about me, uh, this random fact number three, I have a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old kid named PPC Kid. Uh, you can follow him on on Twitter. Here we are running the marathon. Last year he was trying to be helpful, but actually he wasn't that helpful. All right, back to our story. Uh, we're talking about our top seven must-try marketing tactics and strategies for 2017. And the first thing uh, I want to talk about is quality score and some secret quality score changes that Google has been making. And I know you're thinking, like, oh, my God, there goes Larry again with the quality score stuff. But there's, there's, they, don't, they don't announce all the changes that they're making. Uh, and so I wanted to just share some, some new research from just a few months ago that we did here uh, in October of last year. And basically what we looked at across this billion dollars of ad spend that we manage uh, we wanted to see what's the impression rate weighted average quality scores for small businesses. All right, so basically, if you think about your keywords, you know there, there's kind of an equal probability of whether or not your 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 keyword will be graded a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But the question is, what, will will they actually accrue impressions or not? Will will these ads be seen or not? And so. Uh, what we found was that the average quality score is not five anymore. It's actually six and a half out of ten. Uh, so what this tells me is that um, Google is being more picky in terms of sh determining which ads to show or not. So like, if if you have one of those ads with quality scores one, two, three, four, five, um, you know that's half of the keywords out there, keywords and ads. But it's just very, very, very less likely for those ads to actually be, to be impressed upon users. Now you can still have them shown, but you have to pay pay up like like crazy, basically. Uh, you know. Meanwhile, uh, you know the six, seven, eight, nine, tens are all generating uh, and accruing impressions. Uh, and so, uh, by the way, this data you can you can figure out this data for yourself if you just go to the WordStream uh, grader uh, and, and grade your account. Uh, you can kind of pull up the distribution of, of your, your the, the impressions and, and the quality scores of those keywords and ads uh, to kind of get this histogram. Uh, but guys, I think what's driving this change uh, is, uh, is is obviously mobile, and 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 uh, the other thing was that they eliminated spots eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, of the ads last year, like in in the spring. So those two factors are making it so that there's much fewer ad spots available per query. You know. Uh, and and then uh, Google needs to be much more picky in terms of deciding, you know, should I run this ad or this other ad? Uh, and believe it or not, with like three or four million advertisers, it's usually the case uh, that there's lots of different advertisers competing for the same queries. Uh, and so a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, we did some research on uh, on impression share and and how Google kind of how the the impact of quality impacts ad delivery. And what we found was that. Uh, and this was a couple of years ago, that for every point increase or decrease in the quality score of your keywords and ads, uh, you would see a 9% increase or decrease in impression share. And of course, obviously you want to have high impression share because otherwise it's like running ad campaigns that, never, that don't ever show. Uh, that's kind of useless. Uh, and so we redid that analysis and what we're showing here is now like in 2017, it's like twice as competitive. A one point increase or decrease in quality score uh, results in an 18 percent, um, you know, increase or decrease in ad impression share, uh, because it's they have to be so much more picky in terms of deciding which ads to show. So historically, you know, the the rationale for for pursuing these high quality score, high, high click through rate um, uh, campaigns was because of these huge discounts and penalties uh, that were applied to either great campaigns or, or lower campaigns. But now what I'm telling you is it's not only the the, 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 the price increase or decreases uh, that are directly proportional to quality score, but it's also whether or not your ad shows and, and, and how frequently that that's becoming an increasingly important factor. Uh, by the way, uh, that, that this is um, this notion of quality score, even though you can only see it in, in search ads, like on the keywords, uh, it exists in all the other Google platforms. Uh, for example, in, in Gmail ads, uh, if, you're, if you're running Gmail ads, uh, the cost per click is inversely proportional to the open rate of your of those emails uh, of those sponsored emails. Uh, so they don't have a tab that lets you see that quality score, but it, it definitely they're definitely using that. N notice how like if you if you can get the open rate down to to 28 percent or something, you're paying like 10 cents for for those opens. Um, uh, similarly, on the Google Display Network, there's no way to get the quality score of your display placements. However, let me assure you that you know the uh, they, they use this quality score metric, even though you can't see it. Um, the higher the, the click-through rates of your display ads, 
uh, the much, much less you'll pay for those, those clicks. Uh, typically, a 0.1% increase in click-through rate will yield a 20% increase or decrease in cost per click. Uh, so it's a difference between like $3 or $0.30, cents, basically. Um, all right, so hopefully I've convinced you that in 2017, uh, you know, this, this notion of quality score is even more important than it was uh, just a year ago. Uh, but I wanted to get, talk a little bit about what to do about it, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, this is all theoretical. We, we, we need, you know, tactical things that we can do here. And so talking a little about um, this crazy thing, you know, expanded text ads, uh, you know, if you haven't heard of these things, you've, you're probably in the wrong webinar. You must have, like, punched in the wrong digit or something. You know, expanded text ad, it's kind of a big deal. Um, and and uh, this will be our ticket uh, that we're going to ride. Uh, so basically, it's, it's uh, you know, obviously it's substantially d double the, the real estate for these ads. Uh, and, and, and my point is just that while everyone is forced to adopt this thing, uh, most of the people that I look at, like 80, 90 percent of the, the accounts that I see, are adapting are, are adopting this as their expanded text ad strategy, where they kind of just, okay, Google has gifted us this bigger canvas. Um, Let's kind of just work the, the existing ad copy into this new bigger canvas. And guys, this is a terrible strategy because basically you're kind of not really fully understanding how great this gift from Google is and not fully taking advantage uh, of, of, uh, of the power of expanded text ads. Uh, instead of just kind of framing the, the the, your existing ads into a bigger frame, what you should be really thinking is rebooting them. Like you should be thinking about like, well, what could we do now? Like forget about what ads are working today. Uh, let's just completely try to reimagine these ads and, and, and from the ground up take advantage of, of, of this new um, format. And so, you know, we're stream advertisers. Um, this is this is among our, our customers. So, but you know, these are going to be a little bit a uh, little bit skewed because they're they're a little bit. Uh, they're a little bit above average, if you will. Um, but basically, what we're seeing amongst our customers is that you know it, it's still possible to shoot yourself in the foot with these with these um, expanded text ads. You can you know you can decrease your your click through rate by you know 20 percent, but that's only on like you know 10 percent of our customers. Uh, but most of, most of these uh, you know 90 percent of the customers are seeing gains with with expanded text ads, and and the top 10 percent of them are seeing massive gains, like 132 percent increases. Uh, and so those are that's the difference between being a unicorn or a donkey. Uh, and so, so basically, uh, what I've done over this holiday season, while while everyone was out, um, you know, I don't know, doing holiday stuff, I, I was in my unicorn research lab, kind of trying to look at the expanded text ads and trying to figure out what are the craziest ideas that seem to be working for advertisers to really take advantage of these expanded text, text, text ads to boost the, the click through rates. Uh, and so, here's a couple crazy ideas. Now, don't don't shoot me here. Hear me out. Some of these are sound a little crazy, but just hear me out. Uh, the first idea has to do with like killing off your your calls to action uh, from your headlines. Now, the reason why you might think this is crazy is because probably if you're in marketing, uh, you know the first thing that you were taught, you know, as a marketer is like you need this call to action, and 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 um, no matter what you do, don't forget the call to action. Well, what we're finding is that it's it's safe to actually drop some of these obvious calls to actions from headlines and instead move them. Out of the out of the expanded text headline uh, into the into the site link. So what I'm talking about here is that like you know back you know 15 years ago when the internet was new, you know people didn't know that if you clicked on this link that you could learn more about this thing or if if you were clicking on a shopping link like really I did not know that if I clicked on this thing it would go to you know buy now or like or learn more info or or, or trying it now. So like I think people are just a little further along you know in terms of their their skills and so um, so basically what what I'm trying to do here is clear the deck. I think another reason why people use these calls to action is because they were so concise. You know, we only had 25 characters to work with, and so they kind of fit in those headlines really nicely. But now, the, the different story, you've got tons of room here. Um, we're going to just move these obvious, you know, no-brainer calls to actions out of the headline and into the into the site links to free up more room. All right. Uh, another bunker busting idea to, to blow up kind of these um, CTRs, these crappy CTRs, is this notion of, of blowing up uh, or breaking up with dynamic keyword insertion. So, you know what, guys? There's a huge difference between donkeys and unicorns in terms of the click-through rate. So, if you look at all the billions of dollars of ad spend that we have, uh, and look at like ads in position one, you've got these unicorn ads that are doing, you know, ten, two times, like 200% better than average, and then you've got these donkey ads that are like three times underperforming the average. And so, if you can convert a 
donkey into a unicorn, that's not just like a you know 10% increase. It's it's a 600% increase. You see what I'm saying? So uh, so basically, the idea here is to get rid of dynamic keyword insertion. You know, people were lazy. That's why we used um, dynamic keyword insertion because it, it it was we were lazy and it worked okay. And it, you know just it just fit in those headlines, but now we've got, there's no excuse to be using this because there's just so much more room to be more creative. Uh, these key, these ads are all using dynamic uh, keyword insertions and they're all donkeys. Uh, and we know this because uh, when we look at the performance of ads with and without dynamic keyword insertion, we find that the dynamic keyword insertion ads do okay. They're kind of like, you know, middle class and up. But when it comes to looking at the top 1% or the top 5% of ads, you know, these unicorns, uh, basically, uh, then you know you're you're way better off not using the, the dynamic keyword insertion instead uh, of, of just mechanically parroting back the query. Uh, you know you should be um, kind of thinking about your value proposition, your guarantee. Uh, it's uh, you know what makes you what what makes you so special, that kind of stuff. And so uh, we're gonna we're gonna move this out of the dynamic keyword insertion out of the headline and, and to free up even more room in in the ad text and move this stuff uh, into the the path. So so you can have kind of like a URL path with with the, with the keywords in it. Uh, and that's close enough. All right. Uh, all right. So now what we've done here, if, you, if you're with me so far, we've kind of cleared out the old junk, the, the dynamic keyword insertion and, and the, um, uh, what was it, the, the, the obvious calls to actions. Uh, and so um, now we have this blank canvas that's twice as big as, for, as before, and we're going to leverage emotional triggers, uh, specifically these nine emotions, laughter, fear, amusement, joy, curios curiosity, empathy, awe, sadness, and anger. These make people want to click like crazy. So we have to kind of encapsulate one of these ideas uh, and then write the ad, not from the perspective of, of the company trying to be preachy and trying to sell something, but rather uh, right from the perspective of one of these four uh, pers personas, the comedian, the hero, the villain, the fielded friend, or the bearer of bad news. So that's the theory. Let's give you two quick examples of turning donkeys into unicorns by combining the emotional hooks and personas. Uh, here's the first one. It's just, you know, the, for a divorce lawyer, who's your husband with? Is he sleeping with her right now? Get revenge and a smile on your face right now. The hero and the villain is, is basically the persona that we're using. So the husband or the mistress is the villain. The, the divorce attorney is the hero. And we've got really a ton of emotion here with anger and revenge. This is a unicorn that gets six times the average click-through rate. And of course, the reason why this works is because it just really sticks out amongst the other donkeys, which are kind of just all using dynamic keyword insertion. Um, here's the other example here. Uh, it's breast for, for breast cancer screening. Uh, the basic ad that, 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 that we were previously running was, was, was very matter of fact. It's like with early detection, survival rate is 100%. Book an appointment today. Uh, the new ad that we wrote using the expanded text ads, um, it's like we used an emotional trigger of fear. Uh, and, and, and use the persona of bearer of bad news. So now it says, only 15% of, of women live five or more years with late screening. Don't delay, get screened. Uh, you know, so, so that's, um, I think that's a lot more compelling uh, in terms of, uh, you know, it, it gets four or five times the click-through rate. But it's, it's, not, it's not just clicks to website. Um, what, are, what are their outcomes? Uh, well, we looked at the call volumes, like how many people are calling this clinic. Uh, there was 170% increase in call volumes. Uh, why? Um, because uh, it, it's more catchy. Like people, people are more motivated to to to, to call now rather than call like tomorrow. Uh, and not only that, uh, we saw just by making that little headline shift, 125% increase in, in appointments booked. So, uh, and this is pretty common uh, where where we see uh, higher click through rates lead, leading to higher conversion rates. Because if you get people excited enough and worked up to, to click on an on an ad. Uh, or, or to click on anything for that matter, um, that that excitement tends to carry through to purchase or, or lead capture or whatever it is you were hoping for them to do. Um, so ba basically, my last idea here for, for, for headline CTRs is to leverage this plug and play title template that is basically used by all the viral uh, articles on BuzzFeed. Uh, and, and basically, it's just you know, a format, emotional hook, content type, and topic. So you just got to format your, your ideas and your emotional hooks uh, into this particular template, like four awesome ad copy strategies to six times click-through rate or you know, seven, you know, remarkable unicorn level, you know, marketing strategies to try in 2017. You know, this really works, guys. We have over 3,000 registrations for today's webinar, so that's proof uh, that the headline matters. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, 
my number five marketing hack, and that is to, so we've been talking a lot about paid ads and stuff like this, but marketing, there's lots of different channels, not just paid. Uh, and, and so I wanted to talk about hacking your organic SEO rankings, so your Google organic search and your Bing search rankings uh, for organic search with unusually high search click-through rates. So what am I talking about here? So Google, uh, just over a year ago, they, they announced that they are turning over their organic search uh, AP, A, uh, algorithms over to, towards uh, AI and machine learning. So that's artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. Basically, um, ranking number one organically, we used to be all about you know having the right keywords and having a bunch, a bunch of you know, big links to, to your website, like from, from the, the Wall Street Journal or from the New York Times or whatever. Uh, so it was used to be all about those links and keywords, but now uh, it's going to work actually more like this, where a user searches for something um, these machine learning algorithms will, will kind of make guesses and try to come up with what they think you're looking for. Uh, and then they'll test to see whether or not the results they served satisfies the user, yes or no. If yes, the organic search engine will, will say, like, great, next time I see a query like this, I'm going to put this listing at the top of the page. Uh, and and if, 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 uh, if the answer is no, uh, they're going to try something else next time. So basically uh, what's happening here is that organic search is going to look is actually looking a lot more like Google AdWords because that's exactly how Google AdWords has been working for uh, the last 16 years. Uh, you know, ever since AdWords Quality Score was invented, like it's been all machine learning based. The targeting and all this stuff is all based on on engagement metrics like click through rates, whether or not people are engaging with the content or of the ads or not, uh, and and if they are, then that's that, that should be rewarded with greater visibility. Uh, and so that's exactly what they're doing in organic search. Finally, after 16 years, they're using kind of user engagement, like click-through rates, bounce rates, that kind of stuff, uh, to calculate result quality uh, organically. And so I wanted to just share with you uh, two crazy experiments that we did uh, recently. Uh, the first one was, what's a good click-through rate in organic search? Uh, and so basically, um, we, we've done this research for, for AdWords, but what, what, what is it for organic search in Google? Um, Basically, it's shifting. So when I looked at the same key, about the same thousand keywords uh, in May, June, and September of 2016, you can see the curve. Like, what's the expected click-through rate for a given position? Uh, it's getting higher and higher and higher uh, in in the in the top spots, and lower and lower and lower uh, at the bottom. And this is what what machine learning does. Basically, it it it, it makes it so that the things that are most likely to be clicked tend to be further, further up the page, and the stuff that's not likely to be clicked kind of sinks to the bottom of the page. Um, so basically, if that's kind of the big picture, I wanted to give you a kind of a, a little picture here with a, a very specific example of how click-through rates impacts ranking. You know, obviously, you know, the ranking impacts the click-through rate. You know, if you're in the first spot, you're going to have a 30% click-through rate. If you're in the second spot, it's going to be closer to 15%. But what about the reverse? Does click-through rate, like does improving click-through rate actually impact ranking? Uh, and so to do this, we we just basically redid the same kind of, kind of reverse engineering stuff that we did on AdWords. And what we found was, um, you know, increasing your organic click-through rates by uh, 3%, like if you can beat the expected click-through rate for a given organic spot by 3%, you, you will increase your, your ranking by, by one spot on average. Um, and so, uh, so here, here's a specific example of, of, of making an organic search more clicky. Uh, we had this old article called Guerrilla Marketing, 20 plus examples and strategies to stand out. We just kind of changed it very slightly. We just called it the 20 plus uh, jaw-dropping guerrilla marketing examples and strategies uh, that raised the click-through rate and that raised the rank. Uh, so that's fairly interesting. Um, but what's also interesting is that this form of click-through rate optimization um, for organic search, it's, it's incredibly leveraged. Uh, what we did is we increased it, just that small change in headline, increased the traffic by 112% in just five months uh, from 3,542 organic views to 7,498. Uh, that's a pretty big gain for, for one line of work. Uh, and so the point is organic click-through rate boosts are super valuable because the higher the click-through rate, the more clicks you'll get organically, uh, but also Google will then notice that, th that this listing is getting lots and lots of click through clicks, uh, and so it'll be rewarded with a better ranking, which means even more clicks. And so the reason why I'm, I'm talking about this um, 
this whole organic stuff uh, and, and how it ties out nicely into what we were talking about earlier, which was quality score in AdWords, is that the same tips and tricks that I was sharing with you on how to raise your, your ad click through rates also work, they're identical uh, in, or, in organic search. Basically, the headlines for, for, for expanded text ads versus an, an organic search listing are identical now. I mean, that's why they listed, they, they made that change, is it was to make them look uh, undifferentiatable. Uh, and so basically, the, the keys to winning in, 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 it, in SEO feels a lot like what, we're, what PPC people were doing forever, uh, which was just trying to get these really catchy headlines to, to get, to get uh, clicks. Uh, and so when, it's all about finding these unicorns, and, and um, you know, typically it, it, the odds of finding a unicorn is like 1 in 10, 1 in 20. A lot of times marketers think they have a unicorn, but actually it's something else like a stegosaurus or, or a mosquito or a hummingbird or a narwhal or a rhinoceros. So that's because we're biased. We get we fall in love with our campaigns and we think it's better than it really is. The point is you have to be kind of objective and not kind of, um, you know, be uh, so biased. Uh, you know, be open-minded, trying out 10 different ideas using those same headline hacks uh, that I was talking about earlier uh, using you know the emotional triggers and the format template and, uh, and, and the um, and, and the personas uh, so you write them all uh, all these headlines out and then um, and by the way uh, this is if you're just doing this as your, your headline optimization this is not headline optimization this is this is one headline not four it's the same headline with different punctuation and capitalization uh, basically what we're going to do is we, we just Test these things and audition them on, on on AdWords as you're already doing for your your AdWords campaigns and just slot the winner uh, into uh, into your uh, organic content uh, and so so that's kind of the the, the big idea there. Um, so so far, uh, let's recap here. We've talked a lot about quality score and and how the click through rates matter a ton on paid search. Uh, hopefully, I've convinced you that click-through rates also matter a, a huge deal on organic search. So I wanted to give you this crazy unfair way of raising your click-through rates on both paid and organic click-through rates that not a lot of people are talking about, uh, but, it, but it's really clever. Uh, basically, what we're finding is that if people have brand affinity with your company, if they've heard of you before, uh, our research shows that you are two to three times more likely to click on that thing because you've heard of them. So like people aren't randomly clicking on organic and paid search listings on Google and on Bing just randomly. It's, it's, it has to do with their pre-existing tastes and preferences. Uh, and not only that, uh, the, the conversion rates are dramatically uh, affected by kind of this pre-existing uh, brand affinity, like whether or not they've see, heard of you before, they've visited your site before, uh, the, the conversion rates tend to be two or three times higher uh, depending on the industry. And so the idea here is like what if you could kind of prime the people who are likely to search for your stuff in the near future with, with your content to bias them so that they, they to build up that brand affinity so that later when they do search for your stuff, they, they click on one of your paid or organic search listings. Uh, and that's exactly the strategy, and that is to use Facebook ads to kind of go after the interests or the demographics of the types of people who are in your target market and search for the things that you're hoping to rank for, get in front of them so that later uh, you know, they, they click on your listings with two or three times higher click-through rates and two or three times higher conversion rates. Um, so how do you figure out what are those those demographics and interests that you should be targeting? Well, um, there's a couple different ways. Uh, Google Analytics has this thing called the the oh sorry, this is Facebook Insights has this thing called um, you know Customer Insights where you can upload a pixel or a list and it'll kind of slice and dice the the audience to kind of tell you exactly what are their interests, their locations, their activities. Um, that kind of stuff, and and you, what you're looking for is like these uh, kind of I call them um, smoking guns, like um, things that are you know if they like reality shows and are African American, well that's a really great you know sign that they they're into this particular brand or something. You know like it's it's different for every company. That was just a stupid example, but but like um, you're just looking for things where, uh, you know, if they have this affinity, then there's a really, really good chance that they'll, they'll be a, a, a customer. Like, if, if you buy diapers, chances are you might also be interested in, in these racing cars, these, these um, the, 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 what are those called, matchbox uh, racing cars. Uh, so that's, that's how they got me. All right, so uh, basically, um, the, you know, Google Analytics has the same thing, um, not to be undone by 
Facebook, they have the Person Explorer, so this allows you to kind of get insights uh, on any segment that you wish uh, in terms of like what are their interests and, 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 and affinities and in market, in market um, kind of uh, segments for those, for those users. Even Super Twitter has uh, these audience insights. So, so basically, it's all about combining not just search, but also trying to think about who are, what are the characteristics of the types of people who are executing those searches, and trying to get in front of those people, uh, so that th when they do search for stuff, um, they're going to be predisposed towards kind of primed towards picking your stuff. All right, so we're past the midpoint here. Uh, we're talking all about my number three market marketing hack for 2017, and that is to fix your organic Facebook reach. So again, we're changing channels here between paid and organic. Um, uh, so organic Facebook reach, that's like, you know, if you've got a million fans on Facebook and you post something to Facebook, do you know how many of those million people are going to actually see that post organically? It's less than 1% of them, so like around 10,000 of them. That's pathetic. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about um, how to fix that organic reach uh, on Facebook, and, you know, we're not going to get back to the glory days of like, you know, five years ago where everybody saw it, uh, but I can definitely make it more than one or two percent. Uh, and so, uh, the, the way that there's a there's a secret hack uh, to to um, to fix your your organic reach on Facebook. Uh, first, let me explain to you how this works. Oh my God, this it looks very similar to the previous diagram that I showed you, uh, and that's because it is. Uh, it basically, how the Facebook and newsfeed works is all based on machine learning AI kind of systems. A user browses their their Facebook newsfeed, uh, and then the algorithm has to to make a guess in, and to try to figure out what what um, what updates the user might be interested in. It then checks to see if the user clicked on the post or liked it or commented it on it or, 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 or uh, you know, or blocked the post. Like, you know, basically they, they need to figure out what the engagement rate was. Uh, and, and then um, if, if, if it was a success, well, then you'll see more of those types of updates in the future. And if no, uh, you know, they'll, they'll basically stop showing you that stuff um, and, and try something else. That's why you always see the updates organically from the companies and people who you're close to, and you never see the updates of the people who you, who you don't you don't talk to. Uh, it's just like the filter bubble, basically. So, uh, and then this is actually the exact same diagram that I just showed you like a couple slides ago when I was explaining Rank Brain. Um, and so, that's how it works. The strategy for defeating it, um, the the Facebook newsfeed is the same. Uh, as, as search, uh, both paid and organic, and that is to uh, pursue kind of a high engagement strategy. Like uh, instead of posting garbage to your um, to your newsfeed on Facebook, that that's going to cause a death spiral. So what happens there is that if you post garbage to your newsfeed, then fewer and fewer people will will engage with it, which means that in the future, few, even fewer and fewer people will will engage with, with your stuff. It, so it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, the opposite of a death spiral is the virtuous unicorn cycle, and that's where you you post only your unicorn status updates to your your Facebook feed, and so then people like it, and that means they're more likely to see your stuff, uh, you know, in the future. Uh, and so the question then becomes like, how do how do you know if 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 these posts that you're posting to, to Facebook are donkeys or unicorns? Uh, again, people, these marketers, they're so silly. They think everything is a, is is a unicorn, but you know, we we know that only the top five percent of your stuff is a unicorn. So we can't all be unicorns. Not all of those updates. Uh, so but the idea here is just to audition your status updates off of Facebook. So like on Twitter or on email marketing, like just post a lot of stuff and see how it does. It's basically an, like, like American Idol. It's like an addition. Just try it out. Look at those engagement rates. You know, are they 2 or 3%? If, if so, those are donkeys. If it's like 10 or 20%, then well, those are unicorns. Uh, and, to, and you only post the unicorns organically to, to, to Facebook. Uh, guys, just a couple other uh, crazy ideas here. Um, I did some research last year uh, in, in Q4, and basically what we found was that the the same content ideas that you're using, like in your best ads or on your top ranking content campaigns for for SEO, those those tend to do well on on AdWords. Uh, they also tend, tend to do well on Google Search Organic. Uh, they'll also do well in Facebook because basically what you're seeing is 
the same stuff that does great in search does well on social media because the reason why they did so well in search was because they were high engagement content uh, and that's the same high engagement content that's going like, to really interesting, be really interesting uh, and will do really well on Facebook. Uh, there's like a really strong correlation uh, in terms of the engagement stuff. But the, what's tying these two ideas together is machine learning. It's, it's that both Facebook Newsfeed and or Google Organic and Page Search are employing um, uh, machine-based learning algorithms that greatly reward high engagement stuff, uh, and so so it's basically the same game. Uh, so uh, here we are. We're at my number two marketing hack, uh, which is to pay for uh, to to boost your, your 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 organic social media unicorns with with with, with Facebook ads. So this is pretty easy. Um, <laughs> Surprise, surprise, uh, Facebook and Twitter ads, they use quality score too. Uh, it's all about the engagement rates. I'm beginning to sound like a broken record. The higher the engagement rate on these Twitter and Facebook ads, you know, like if you're, if you're promoting junk with 1% engagement rate on, on Facebook in a promoted post, you're going to be paying $3 for that click. But if you can get that engagement rate up to 20 or 30%, then that, that click becomes 2 or $0.03. Cents. Uh, so, uh, so basically... What I'm saying here is when you do find those unicorns, those, those pieces of content that are doing spectacularly well organically on search or that are doing really well on paid search or are doing great on organic social media, well then why wouldn't you also uh, you know, promote that thing in paid social media? Because the stuff that does well elsewhere, that, that's going to also do really well if, if you pour more gas on the fire uh, using um, paid social ads on Facebook and Twitter and that kind of stuff. So. I just give you a stupid example. Last, uh, well, the, the date stamp on this post isn't correct, but this last May, uh, I did a, a blog post called Five Big Changes Coming uh, to AdWords, Everything You Need to Know. You know, I posted this thing and, and it, everyone was reading it. It got like 20,000 views in, in just a few, um, in, in just a, like less than a day, okay? Uh, and so I'm like, holy cow, everyone is reading this story because it's such big news. I'm going to pay to promote this thing. So I spent, you know, $250 to, to, to promote that post. And it got 10,000 uh, shares or likes on, on Facebook and, and, and about 100,000 views. Uh, so that, that's a pretty good uh, uh, investment. Uh, and, and basically, it, it's this idea of promoting, putting money against your, your unicorns. Uh, so, guys, we're almost out of time today. Uh, the, we're down to my last PPC uh, insanely awesome hack for 2017, and that is, uh, it's a CRO hack, uh, and it's to change your offer. All right. So, the problem here is that you know, and by the way, we run this we run this analysis every year, uh, and nothing changes. So, the median conversion rate for for internet marketers, like you know, regardless of what you're selling, it's around two two point three five percent conversion rates, um, and, and that's going nowhere for the last decade. Uh, but what's really interesting is the shape of this curve uh, also stays the same. The top 10% of advertisers do five times better, three to five times better than, than the donkeys. So the, the unicorns here, uh, unicorn advertisers are converting at 11.45% versus 2.35%. That's quite a lot better. Uh, so how do you become a conversion rate unicorn as opposed to a conversion rate donkey? Can anyone guess what I'm going to say here based on the patterns of, of what we've been talking about earlier? Uh, so, so basically, um, you guessed it. It's, it has to do with uh, it has to do with uh, engagement rate. So I know there's a lot of uh, kind of this groupthink where you know it's all about the font spacing and the button colors and the text and the images you know and and and, the, and this will somehow magically you know double your conversion rate but really um this those types of changes are superficial and they don't they don't persist like they don't last for forever they last for like a week uh, the reason why these these changes work is because it's you're kind of making it look new uh but the reason why that doesn't work is because the change that you made is no longer new two weeks from now. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it just fatigues. Um, here's the best example I can give you to prove my point here. So the, it's basically uh, higher click-through rates equals higher conversion rates. So this is, this is a company uh, that does e-commerce for like a thousand products. Uh, and they sell all sorts of different things ranging from, you know, knickknacks, you know, all sorts of different things. Uh, and some of the things have very, very low click-through rates, and they tend to convert really badly. And some things have really, really high click-through rates, and they, they convert much, much higher, like three or four times better. Um, so I just wanted to give you an example of this. So one of the things they sell is picnic pants, and, and this is, Jesus, it's like 
the worst thing in the world. It's basically uh, you're eating off of your crotch, and and I don't know why anyone would, would want to do this because you look ridiculous. Um, but basically, that picnic pants are so terrible that they have a very low click click through rate, and and um, and the people who then click through to to read more about that 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 product tend to have a very, very bad conversion rate. Like, they don't buy it because it's stupid. On the other hand, drones are the coolest thing you could ever get if you, you know, if you have a, a husband or, or a significant boyfriend or whatever. Like, I would really highly recommend, you know, getting them one of these for, for, for their birthday this year or whatever. Uh, but basically, drones, they're, they're so popular, high click-through rate and high conversion rates because they're so cool. Uh, so basically, the idea here is like, you know, if 1% of people are, are, are clicking on your thing, uh, you know that what what the market is telling you is that like 99% of the people think that what you're offering is not interesting. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and so the worst thing that you can do, and that's actually what most marketers do, uh, is to put lipstick on a donkey. So what they do is they like, oh my God, we have 1% click through rates or sorry 1% conversion rates. What we, what we really need to do here is have better better stock photography of like you know maybe yoga you know yoga picnic pants or something like this like no 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 uh, or 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 they could have a buy one get one free picnic pants or or, or triple the size of, of of the buy now button like this is all garbage like this is a terrible this is called putting lipstick on a donkey um, instead what you need to do is just like kill off your donkey offer and come up with a completely different better offer because like even if those images uh, those new stock photography of, of the picnic pans do better, uh, you're, you're still going to be a donkey. Uh, so the idea here is just, you know, one, one example uh, that we did uh, four years ago, four, five years ago with WordStream was to change our offer. We, we were a donkey. We had a free trial of, of our software, and that was converting at exactly 2.35%. 2, 2 it was pretty right, right in the middle average, uh, and the reason was because, it, you know, it took 30 minutes to download your data, uh, it took, you know, there was this huge form, um, uh, and, 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 you know, it just takes a little while to learn a new, new uh, PPC management platform. It just takes, takes, you know, a little bit of time. We changed that offer. We just flipped it on its head, and, and we now today just offer a free AdWords performance grader thing. And by the way, you know, you should definitely run this thing, uh, like, immediately uh, to find out, like, how you're doing in AdWords. But, but basically... What it does is it gives you a report card uh, in, in 20 seconds of how you're doing in AdWords. It, it benchmarks your performance against all the other advertisers in your industry, uh, in your country, uh, you know, with a similar size budget. So you can really find out like how you're doing, and it shows you exactly where the problem areas are and when where, where your areas of strengths are. So this was basically, uh, uh, you know, it only took me three months to build this thing, uh, but you know, it basically. Uh, uh, quintuple the conversion rates, um, you know, and, and they've stuck. Like they, 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 it's not like this um, kind of this uh, fleeting uh, con conversion rate boost that lasts for like a month. And like it's it's been pretty steady for for uh, years now. Uh, and that's that's what I'm talking about is is um, not you know putting donkey like putting lipstick on the donkey would be like changing the video or, or the text or, you know, or eliminating one field versus changing up the offer in a more substantial way. Uh, and, and, um, yeah, this is like some of the examples of this report card. It's just like, oh, you're in the you're in the bottom four percent of advertisers, uh, like in this in industry, uh, you know, in, the, in this country, et cetera. Or, or oops, like we we found ten thousand dollars of wasted spend here. Here it is. Or, or uh, you know, that agency uh, that you're paying all this money to, they haven't logged in in ninety days. Like, th like these are really interesting insights. Um, that, that uh, we surface uh, instantaneously, and this is so much more valuable than, than trying to figure out, you know, how to use use uh, the trial, uh, you know, by themselves. Um, you know, it's just that's just one example from, from personal experience. But you can be creative and, and do this for any industry. All right, guys, those are my seven hacks today. I want to talk a little bit about just wrapping it up here. Uh, so basically, if you noticed, uh, if you're clever, all seven of these hacks were not just random. Uh, you know, ideas. Um, they were all unified by this notion of engagement rates. Uh, so basically, uh, the theme of 2017, in my opinion, is that high engagement rate campaigns will win marketing in 2017. Uh, remember, we were talking about AdWords quality score. That's nothing new, but in this case, it's even more important this year than it was last year because because they're being more picky. Uh, we talked about SEO, organic search, and how machine learning makes it that 
high click-through rate search listings get much higher clicks uh, and at much higher rankings. Uh, we talked about organic social media on Facebook, how you know, if, if you can only post unicorn organic posts, uh, you will recover, resuscitate a lot of that lost organic social media engagement that, that Facebook has stolen from us over the last five years. Um, and, and it, same thing with paid social. Uh, when you do find these rare and, un and remarkable unicorns with high engagement, pay to promote them because that will generate a ton of, of interest on the cheap. Uh, and the last idea was this notion of, of um, that higher engagement begets higher conversion rates because it just means that they're excited about this stuff and that excitement tends to, to uh, follow through to, to purchase or, or lead form capture or whatever it is you're trying to do. So machine learning systems, they're creeping into every single marketing system. Like, like we, I didn't even talk about things like email marketing and like email marketing, you know, these spam filters are all based on machine learning. Like it's like if, if you stop engaging with these headlines, uh, you, you won't see those emails anymore. It'll just go straight to your clutter box. You see what I'm saying? Like these, it's, it's all about testing and raising those engagement rates. Um, you know, we talk a lot about in marketing about, oh, you need to focus on quality. But too often I think that quality is, is not well defined. People, I think they define quality as like how much effort you put on it. But I'm telling you it has nothing to do with the, the amount of time and effort you put in. It has everything to do with the engagement rates. Uh, so, so that's the key takeaway today. All these great things that we're talking about have have high engagement in, in, in common. If you can if you can nail the campaigns with the high engagement, you will have great PPC, great SEO, great paid and organic social, and great conversion rate optimization too. So, be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys, guys. We've got some special offers, Michelle. Do you want to talk to our users about the special offers that we have for them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so here we go, folks. We've got three different uh, options that you guys can choose right here for you. Um, you can either choose a live demo of our WordStream Advisor software um, or a one-on-one -on -one AdWords assessment with one of our AdWords certified consultants, or maybe you are all set and you don't need any help um, with your PPC. While you all are um, choosing which option works best for you, I will shoot it back to Larry here with some of the questions that came in throughout. Um, so we've got just a few minutes here, so we'll just get to a couple really quickly. Um, so Larry, a question came in regarding click-through rates. Um, this attendee wants to know, if I pause my ads that have low CTR, will that boost the CTR of my other ads? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, because like, you know, Google wants to show one of your ads, and so you should kill off your donkey ads, and and only run run the the unicorn ads. You know what I mean? So 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 yes, uh, let's let's get rid of them. Awesome. All right. And this question, we had a couple questions come in specifically uh, regarding social media. So with Facebook ads, if this is an up and coming business and they have a pretty small following. What's the best strategy for them to test which ads are unicorns versus the donkeys? Uh, well, so good news. Uh, you have what is known as last mover advantage, uh, you know, because uh, the fact that you have a small fa Facebook uh, following, um, it, it's irrelevant because, you know, the, the engagement numbers organically are, are pretty low. Uh, so, like, even if you had a million followers, it, w it wouldn't really help you. Um, so the, the, the question is, like, how do you figure out um, – what what the unicorns are, and we talked a little bit about this. How you you say you're doing I don't know content marketing, or you're you're, you're producing these guides or or blog posts or stuff like this every every week or every month. Just try sharing them organically, like in your your small email list that you have, or just post them to Twitter. Like if if you audition these things and you get like average results, okay, then those are donkeys. Like if the open rate is like. Five to ten percent on an email, that's a donkey. You know, if the open rate on an email is like twenty-five or thirty percent, that's a unicorn. So, like, y usually, what I'm trying to say is engagement is cross-channel. Like, you can what does well in, in what what has high engagement in one channel typically has high engagement in another channel because it just means that it's really interesting, right? Uh, and so, what you can just do is just test these things, uh, you know, on 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 um, on Twitter or or, or emails or or whatever, uh, and and just see how they do. And, and if they do great, then that's a unicorn. But I'm, you know, it's, we're talking top five percent kind of thing here. Not everything is a unicorn. Now, 
if you don't have any social media traffic to test this stuff all, out on, you can also do, do something similar where, you, where you're just testing it out on small budgets. So take $5, okay, and, and then just test out the idea, promote it to, to five Five dollars worth of people that'll that'll give you like one or two thousand impressions, and and you, you're basically auditioning it on the cheap, uh, and and then basically if if, um, uh, if it, when you find the winner then then put like a thousand dollars behind it or five hundred dollars behind it because you know that it's going to do well, right? You can take you you can eliminate all the the uncertainty here. Like there's just no need to to throw thousands of dollars at junk content. Uh, next question. Gotcha. All right. So this is. Um in regards to your point about using those, tapping into the emotions to really boost your ads and boost your content. This philosophy, it, does it apply to all industries? Specifically, this guest wants to know. He's in the software industry. Does this still work? Oh my God, it, it works the best in the software industry because all the other ads or Facebook posts uh, are, are so boring like the bar is just so low uh, you know these are human beings like they're they they, they, they get humor and and, um, and and you know all this just like any other industry uh, you know I just you know when I think if people say that like we think that these ideas of, of, of uh, emotional hooks and 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 the, and the and the title template does not apply to our industry, or if they're worried about that, you know, I think that's just a failure of imagination. Like, they're just you just try it out, and and, and um, I think you would find that you know what, what what makes people laugh in one industry is is are kind of similar across all. Gotcha. Okay, and we had a slew of questions come in regarding this topic. Talk a little bit about the new expanded text ads. Um, can you let everybody on the presentation today know what is going to happen to their standard text ads once this transition occurs? Uh, they're, they're, it's like an auto migrate, basically. Um, you know, it's basically what I was talking about today, which is like you, you'll you'll remember how I had those two pictures of the unicorn, uh, Michelle, like, and one was in the small frame and the yeah. other one was in the big frame. Google will just take that small picture and place it into a bigger frame and 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 my my point is just that's such a waste uh because um you're not taking advantage of the medium you know I'm like you, can you imagine a great painter like Picasso and you you give him this huge canvas would he paint the same you know stupid thing no he'll come up with something completely different you know so gotcha great Awesome. Well, Larry, thank you so much for all of your insight today and all the knowledge that you shared with everybody on the line. Um, we actually, just to piggyback off of that last question on ETAs, we have a, another webinar coming up uh, in just two weeks that is going to really target in on that topic specifically uh, with one of our Google uh, AdWords experts here. So be on the lookout for that webinar. Um, and that just about does it for our time today. So thank you again to everybody on the line, um, and thank you to Larry.